Today I'm going to talk about why hormones like insulin are so much more important than calories for weight loss. And no, it doesn't break any laws of thermodynamics. It's coming right up. Let's start with the energy balance equation. That is body fat equals calories in minus calories out. And this is always true, but it doesn't mean what you think it means. Body fat is simply a store of food energy, also known as calories. So you eat a certain number of calories, you burn a certain number of calories, and you can store a certain number of calories. And those three variables exist in an equilibrium. That is why it's called a balanced equation. So it's the same as a refrigerator, for example. A refrigerator is a store of excess food that you've bought. So you go to the grocery store, you buy some food, you eat some food, and you can store some food as well. If you don't go to the grocery store, you can take food out of the refrigerator and eat it. Same thing with body fat. If you don't eat, you can take calories out of the body fat and use that to power your body, right? Sort of. This is what trips everybody up because the door to the fridge is sometimes locked. And that changes everything you need to know about weight loss. So let's change the situation and put a lock on the refrigerator door. So what happens if you go to the grocery store and there's a certain, uh, you eat a certain amount of that and you go put the rest in the refrigerator. Okay, now your refrigerator is totally full. It's very, very full. In fact, it's too full. So now, you don't go to the, uh, to the store and you want to eat. But what happens? Well, what if the door is locked and you can't open the fridge? Then the only thing you can do is not eat or you have to go, or you are forced to go to the store and get more food. In which case, the situation has completely changed. And this is what happens in the body because there is a lock on that fat. It's not like you can simply deposit the excess calories in the body fat and withdraw those calories anytime you want. Whether you can put calories into body fat or whether you can take it out depends completely on the hormones. That is insulin. Insulin is a hormone that goes up when you eat. Your body says, oh, I'm eating. Okay, I need to store some of this. So then it opens the fridge door. That is, it opens up access so that you can put calories into storage as body fat but crucially you can't take it out if insulin is high you cannot take fat and burn it for energy because you want to store it it's only when insulin starts to fall that you can actually start to pull those calories back out so just like that lock on the fridge door what's important is not the calories you're eating and the calories you're burning it's whether or not you can access the storage. So let's look at an example. Suppose that you are eating 2,000 calories a day and you're burning 2,000 calories a day. So everything is in balance and your body fat stores are going to be very similar. It's not going to go up and it's not going to go down. Now you want to lose weight. So you restrict your calories because that's what everybody told you to do. So I'm only going to eat 1,500 calories. Now you expect that your body will continue to burn 2,000 calories and then you're going to get 500 calories from your fat stores. Again, that only works if insulin is low because if insulin is high, you cannot take the energy from those fat stores. And because you ate a low fat diet, you ate lots of carbohydrates, you're eating all the time, insulin is high, well the fat cannot give up those 500 calories. So now you're eating 1500, you're trying to burn 2000, but you're not getting any calories from your body fat stores. And the only way that your body can balance those is to reduce your energy expenditure or reduce your metabolic rate to 1500 calories. And now what's happened is that you're eating 1500 calories, so you're eating less than before, but you're burning 1500 calories, so you're not losing body fat, even as your body fat stores are overfilled. So what's important is actually the hormones. 
If you use intermittent fasting, for example, which allows your insulin levels to fall, the situation is completely different. Let's look at it this way. Suppose you're eating 2,000 calories, burning 2,000 calories. Now you want to lose weight, so you cut a meal and you drop to 1,500 calories. But because you're eating a low carb diet, because you're reducing your insulin, because you're intermittent fasting, insulin level goes down. Now your body can simply release 500 calories from your fat stores. Now you're eating 1,500 calories, your body is giving up 500 calories from body fat, and your body can still burn 2,000 calories, your metabolic rate doesn't have to go down. The calories are exactly the same in both of these situations. The difference is the insulin. It's the lock on the fridge door. You have to let it come open, and that's why the calories is not the whole story. In fact, it's not even the most important part of the story. It's what are you doing to your insulin. And certain foods stimulate insulin more than others. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, if you're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates, we know that insulin is going to spike up. Does that mean that the calories uh, has any difference? No, it simply means that the calories you get from cookies are more fattening than the calories you might get from an egg or broccoli because they stimulate insulin more. It's going to stimulate you to push those calories into storage more. Some foods are more fattening than other foods. That doesn't seem like a stretch of logic and it doesn't break any laws of thermodynamics. What this means from a practical standpoint is what I outlined in my book, The Obesity Code. That is, certain foods are more fattening than other foods and those are the ones that have a very high insulin effect. They are telling your body to please store body fat. So foods contain both calories, which is the energy, but also contain the instructions as to what to do with those calories. And if they have a very high insulin effect, they are telling your body store more body fat. Some of these foods would be things like sugary foods, sweets, candies, chocolates, sodas, juices, highly refined carbohydrates, white bread, white rice. They cause a very high spike in uh, glucose, which causes a very high spike in insulin. Highly processed foods like instant oatmeal, corn starch, potato starch, tapioca starch. These things are processed, they're ground into a very fine powder, which increases absorption and therefore again causes high spikes in glucose and high spikes in insulin and sugary cereals. On the flip side, there are certain foods that have less insulin effect and these are less fattening of foods. So these would include things such as leafy, non-starchy vegetables, meat, fish, chicken, eggs, uh, seafood, and also natural fats such as avocados and uh, butter and those sorts of things. And the third thing is add the intermittent fasting because fasting, when you don't eat anything, is the most efficient way to drop your insulin which allows you to open up those stores of body fat and in essence you're eating, that is you're taking energy out from your stored body fat and that's what it's there for. So let it do its job. That's why you carry body fat. It's not there for looks. And it's just part of a natural cycle. There's a time to feed, which is to store calories, and there's a time to fast, which is to burn those calories. And you need to keep those in balance. And if you do, you're going to be more successful at losing weight.